How's everyone doing? I'm Mobile Master Tech, and today I'm gonna do a speed test around my local college. This is the College of Central Florida. All right, got a baseball game going on over there. It's a Saturday, so you know, not much going on. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So over here we have Verizon, and over here we have T-Mobile. And I will switch to AT&T. It is dual SIM. I'll switch over to AT&T after the fact. But for now, we're just going to do Verizon and T-Mobile. T-Mobile is on LTE. Verizon is on LTE. Now with Verizon, um, they don't have any type of 5G here yet. So we're just going to have to wait on that. There have been C-band sightings so. so. So we see they're pretty much, they're very similar. Verizon actually has been much better in the present than they've been in the past. They've done several remote backhaul upgrades and cluster launches around here. So their speeds have shot up a lot. Um, so right now, as you can see, Verizon with the 120 millisecond, excuse me, 120 uh, megabits per second down, 46.7 up, 30 millisecond ping. Jitter's is kind of bad, 97 milliseconds, but you know, everything else checks out. And usually it's not that bad. I don't know what's going on right now. And then we see T Mobile with 149 down, but only 4.40 up, 35 millisecond ping, 16 millisecond jitter, and a packet loss of 4.7, which is virtually nothing. A 4.7 packet loss can't do anything. Packet loss has to be over 50% to actually matter. Now, it looks like we are connected right there um, to 220 megahertz channels of band 41 that they got from Sprint. So that's good to see. And you can confirm it right here. It's not aggregating right now because it's not doing anything, but we'll run one more speed test on each. To confirm it and while that's happening I will run it over here and there you go aggregation right there. So it's happening Verizon very impressive um, during school hours Verizon slows down quite a bit T-Mobile still can maintain the speed and that's because they actually do have 5g here and we're going to go ahead and actually go and switch into 5G. You see it switching. And here's a cool little trick. If it does this, you see what it's doing right now. N71, and you don't want to wait for N41. You go into your dialer, dial star 2, let it connect. You really don't have to let, I think you could just drop it. It'll go into LTE, back into 5G, and then you should be, well, once I run a speed test, N41 should uh, pop up. Let's go ahead and run it. And I can guarantee you N41 has. Yeah, there it is. 60 megahertz. 20 megahertz of band 66, 15 of band 2. And we got 260 for the download and 20 millisecond ping. That's very good. Jitter at 10. Very good. Verizon. Showing that consistency. See, the jitter is much better now. Great job, Verizon. And yeah, very, very good speeds. We'll run them one more time. And man, I can tell you guys the difference between a Nokia, the old Nokia um, antenna and the new Ericsson antenna is, it's, it, there's a pretty significant difference. So this one, unfortunately, is running the old Nokia antenna, antenna for uh, T-Mobile. So the speeds, you know, it's capped at 60 megabits per second for N41. 
it can't go any higher in split mode. So they're going to have to come over here and rip and replace it eventually. But it's holding up pretty well for now. And one more time, you can see is doing very well. 104 for the download, 60.4 for the upload, 24 millisecond ping, uh, 38 millisecond jitter, T-Mobile, 291 for the download, 17.7 for the upload, 18 millisecond ping, 21 millisecond jitter, no packet loss. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to pan out so I can switch over to AT&T, which has a tower less than a mile away, pretty close. And um, the speeds are, well, I'm not sure what the speeds are actually over here. I know if I get a little bit closer, they're actually pretty good. And that's what AT&T thrives on. Um, I feel like they're the boring carrier for me anyway, where I live at, because most of the upgrades are LTE only. And you do get the five megahertz of band 5 and it is dedicated of uh, excuse me n5 it is dedicated 5g but it's only 5 megahertz so if i'm in lte mode my phone will aggregate up to 45 megahertz of carrier but if I'm in 5G mode, it will only aggregate up to 40 megahertz. So you actually lose spectrum by going to 5G. So I usually, I just turn it off. It's almost every time 5G is worse than uh, 5G or LTE advanced. As you can see, AT&T, uh, nowhere near as good as Verizon and uh, T-Mobile at the college. I wish they were, but they're not. But I tell you what though, what we can do here is turn on 5G and rerun the test. Just so you guys can see. And as you can see, not much better than LTE. It's not better at all than LTE. It's actually much slower, unfortunately, for AT&T. But what I can say for AT&T is they're very consistent. Um, they always seem to work most of the time, unless you're in really, really rural territory. And even then, I've seen them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Verizon. So all in all, they're, I feel like they're reliable. They're not the fastest. They're the since Verizon's added these backhaul upgrades, their C-band in play, I'll say AT&T has become very close to the slowest, but not quite. I'll say Verizon's the slowest, but not by much. AT&T is about to lose to Verizon though very soon, uh, as I have spotted multiple C-band installs in my city. But that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Uh, if you like the content, like, share, subscribe, uh, to the channel follow me on Terrell at Terrell 352 on Twitter until the next video I'm out